So uh, you grew up in Gibraltar, did you? In, yes, sir. What do they think of you uh, being over in the States and playing pickleball? <laughs> they, uh, I think at first they were probably like, what the hell is she doing? Um, <laughs> you know, what is this? I came, to the, I came to college in the States and then I played tennis and volleyball in college and then went on to play tennis and then tennis was a big part of my life. And right. uh, Mine too. Somewhere, yeah, and somewhere along the line I got bribed into Bribed or conned, I'm not sure which one, into playing pickleball. Right. I said I would never play it as a tennis purist, and uh, well, here I am. <laughs> Welcome to Pickleball is Life. If you like these videos, all I ask is that you please press the red subscribe button on the bottom right. It won't cost you anything. Announcing the Avalon Open Pickleball Tournament, Friday, May 20th through Sunday, May 22nd. Register online at pickleballtournaments.com. Also announcing the 2022 Beach Summer League. Register online with Pickleball Den. Links are in the description. So hi, Lee Whitwell. How are you? Thank you for doing this interview. Oh, it's a pleasure, Nick. I'm well, thanks. How about yourself? Very good, very good. I am uh, freezing cold. It is 26 degrees, I think, today. We are getting snow. We're getting a snowstorm in Philadelphia. You're in Florida, right? Correct. I'm at the Villages in Florida. How, so which of the uh, 100 plus courts do you play on at the Villages? I've heard there's... I'm, yeah, there's like over 200 courts. I'm making 200. it my mission to play on every one. Um, <laughs> I'm slowly working my way through all the courts. Are you? Are you really? Yeah, absolutely. Why not? Right. Just to meet different people. That's actually probably pretty cool. Yeah, it's a fun challenge. Right, right. So uh, you grew up in Gibraltar, did you? In, yes, sir. Uh, is that Spain or is that a British colony still like? It's a British colony. It's an overseas yeah. territory in the south of Spain. Right. right. So there is a border between Spain and Gibraltar. My son's in Barcelona, lives in Barcelona. So uh, we've been over there once so far. Um, it's very nice. Do you get to go back much or... I did. I went back last August for my brother's wedding, and then I was home oh. for Christmas as well. So, so a lot um, of family there. About ninety-seven percent of my family lives in Gibraltar in the UK. Yes. <laughs> ah, cool, cool. Yeah. What do they think of you uh, being over in the states and playing pickleball? <laughs> they, uh, I think at first they were probably like, "What the hell is she doing? Um, <laughs> you know, what is this yeah. sport?" But now it's um, it's, it's funny. A common it's reaction like, to every everyone. <laughs> yeah, they're like, what is it? Pick, why pickle? I'm like, don't ask. Just just embrace the game. Have fun. Watch it. Um, but no, I mean, I, I think MLP was a was a good launch pad for me. And, it, my, you know, all my family got heavily involved into watching and uh, staying up till three in the morning, watching oh, the, right, the matches right. and really getting into it. So it's been fun to get to see all of them. Even my cousins get excited about me playing and what I'm doing. So have any of them pick, picked it up? Uh... After no, him. one of my cousins threatens. He's a phenomenal field hockey player, oh, and okay. he keeps threatening that he wants to start playing pickleball. So I need to get him out there and uh, right. and get him playing because um, he's young and fast. And if he has the hands that I think he has, then I might just have to nab him. For a minutes. lot of young kids coming into the sport, it's really nice to see, isn't it? I mean, it was we had it to ourselves for a while, uh, old older folks. Uh, and now uh, it's definitely getting competitive, uh, especially in singles at the singles level. Oh, absolutely! And it's it's so fun to see the the younger generation embrace pickleball and take it seriously and yeah and change the game. You know, it's you know pickleball is like one year in pickleball is like one year in dog is it like in dog years is seven years. The, the game is evolving so fast. Yep. Um, yep. And it's you know it's fun to have a, a front seat in it all, but it's 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 hard to keep up. You know, like what's going on now. <laughs> exactly yeah like Anna Lee uh, you know how old is she she's yeah she uh, just turned 15 a couple of days 15, ago right I, I heard you got to play with it. you she was on your team that was great you got to play with her right oh I had an absolute blast playing with her and LP and it, it helps that uh I mean she was 14 at the time That's but it. she also got my sense of humor so we had we had some fun moments and fun banter exchanges on the court I got to play with her mother down on a vacation in Delray, and they're okay. big Delray folks. So I got to play with the mother there once, and that was a blast. Your I saw Emily uh, playing a bunch, but I just didn't get to play with her. Yes! Wow. Come on! Points of 
uh, and she was like smacking the ball, you know, the big, you know, tennis arm. Uh, it was just, whoa, what is that? You know, it was the first younger kid I saw that was like playing seriously with older folks. It was, it was neat. And that was years ago. I was like three, four years ago. Yeah, it's nice to see them when they, I mean, it's, I think the longer you play pickleball, you have these moments of, if I speed this ball up, it could go out. The, right. the, the much younger generation are like, oh, who cares? We're going to speed yeah. it up anyway. Exactly. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I am a soft player, 100%. Yeah. And uh, I'm exactly opposite. Every time I try to speed it up, I hit it, hit it deeper, hit it out. Uh, let's back up. You went to Westside School in Gibraltar as a kid? Yeah, that was the high school in Gibraltar, correct. What kind of sports did you yeah. play back then? Um, I played volleyball, basketball, and uh, tennis. Those are my main three sports. You really stayed with tennis, right? You were a, a tennis pro, or I pro? did. I did play. I came to the I came to college in the states, and then I played tennis and volleyball in college, and then went on to play tennis. And then tennis was a big part of my life. And right. uh, mine too. Somewhere, yeah, and somewhere along the line, I got bribed into <laughs> bribed or conned. I'm not sure which one into playing pickleball. Right. I said I would never play it as a tennis purist, and uh, well. Here I am. <laughs> I, I am the only uh, guy in my group of like 10 guys that we played for 35 years that went into pickleball. They all thought I was nuts. And one by one, well, not, a lot of them are never going to change, but a few of them have come over to the dark side. Uh, they thought I totally lost it when I left them because I couldn't, I, I only, I was only able to play both for about a year. I, I then just had to give it up because I either I got too obsessed with pickleball or I felt like it was messing up my pickleball game. You know? Right. Yeah. Did you, tr did you play both for a while? And then. So, to yeah, when I was in Oregon, I, um, I was running, um, I was a director of tennis and then also a director of pickleball at a facility. So running Woodie Creek and, you know, I was playing competitive pickleball, teaching pickleball, running a pickleball facility and also teaching um, tennis and, you know, I'd get on the court with the the high school, college kids that, you know, wanted to get a college scholarship. So I'd get on there. I was much more of a technical coach and, right. and tactical coach. So I'd get out and hit with them. And um, yeah, that didn't work out so well. <laughs> it was, I found I could, if I played tennis first, I could play pickleball second. Okay. But if I played pickleball first, I would hurt myself because I'd start to swing the racket and try to do things with the racket that I could do with the paddle, which makes right. no sense right, right. so um, i found playing doubles tennis extremely boring <laughs> because so many times you don't even get into play you know you you know the, at least the play i was playing they were short rallies and a lot of times if you were not returning you just weren't in the action you know right and with pickleball, everybody's in the action every point, and the points are 20, 30 point, you know, shots a lot of times, which is makes it the best thing in the world. Right. No, it's it's it, you're you're absolutely right. I mean, in tennis, you you know, we we used to we spend hours working on your serve plus one, return plus one. Like right. those first four balls are crucial. Right. Um, and in doubles, especially, the point rarely goes past ball four. Right. Um, you know, occasionally it makes it to ball six, and it, if it has, your doubles tactics are terrible. <laughs> <laughs> um <laughs> and, and in pickleball it's it's I'm, I'm trying to you know translate that to pickleball and seeing you know your serve plus your third or return plus your fourth you know the more precise and the better they get then you're you're putting yourself in a much better tactical position but right. the rallies do carry on a lot longer and it's it's a different you know your your put away volleys your angles in doubles tennis um are now your building shots in pickleball Right. That's your, exactly. your softer shots, your drop shots. Right. So it's a, it's a very different switch in mindset. It's, it's all, I, I tell people and I don't think they get it that pickleball is so strategic. It, there's so many interesting nuances. The more you play, the more you learn. And uh, with tennis, I, I just didn't see that, you know, it, it was bang, bang, you know, quick, quick points. And so you couldn't like build a point, you know, there was no building of a point in pickleball is a lot of building. Right. And it's, you have this in, in tennis, I think you've got your, you know, whoever starts the point, whoever gains the upper hand in the point, that's the point. Right. Occasionally there's maybe a log gets thrown in the point resets itself, 
but in pickleball within one point, there's so many micro points because right. you go, you know, you're building it, you're building it, you're on the offensive mode, then something happens and they take the offense away from you. And now they're an offensive or right. now we're in neutral jockeying for position. So, you know, they, they could be, they could be like, you know, 10 micro points within one point in pickleball. Exactly. So it's, exactly. You know, the, the attention to detail, the focus and, 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 and the willingness to stay the course has to be there. It's so hard to explain that to somebody that doesn't know pickleball, you know, that's, that's, that's sort of an art to be able to do. Um, so you found pickleball in 2016. What's the backstory on how you found it and who introduced you to it? And what was it like the first time that kind of stuff? So I'd heard about pickleball prior to moving to Oregon when I lived in San Diego, um, Jennifer Dawson and Cammie McGregor, um, legends in, in the pickleball world. Uh, good friends of mine. And I used to play on the same team with a tennis team with them for sectionals, intersectionals for Southern Cal. Oh, okay. And I remember one year we were playing and I was like, oh, we're at Cami and Jen. They're like, they're at the U.S. Open. I'm like, no, they're not. This is the wrong month for the U.S. Open. <laughs> like, no, for pickleball. I'm like, what? what? <laughs> are they playing pickleball? I'm like, why are they playing pickleball? Why are they playing something old people would play, right? Right. And, right. Um, and I, I was like, well, they must be onto something if it's fun, you know, because they're phenomenal tennis players. And I just didn't think anything of it after that. Ended up moving to Oregon. Uh, a good friend of mine asked me to play in a tournament. I said yes. Without and then, playing before? Well, I assumed she was t- talking tennis. <laughs> and then she decided, she proceeded to tell me that it wasn't tennis. And um, That's a great I was story. like, well, you know, well, what is it? She's like, pick a ball. I'm like, oh, hell no. There's no <laughs> freaking way I am playing something my grandma could play. And she's like, it'll be fun. Well, you know, I'm like, no, sorry. So we went back and forth for a while. And then uh, she's like, look, this is my final offer. I'll buy you a case of beer. I'm like, fine, I'm in. Um, <laughs> so, so literally I, I, I got hooked on pickleball over a case of beer and I didn't own a paddle. You know, she had a paddle. She wrote rental on it because she thought it would be fun. Uh, um, funny. Yeah. And yeah. Um, you know, she was just making fun of me. And I was like, should we practice? She's like, nah, it's way more fun to go out there. I didn't know the rules. I didn't know anything. I, know I had no idea. I didn't know anything. I mean, it was a tournament? <laughs> yeah, it was a tournament. And what, um, what it, tournament? Was Frontier, what it was Frontier Days tournament in uh, in La Pine, <laughs> Oregon. What, and, lo- uh, what level? Like w- women's doubles? I yeah, played 5 And I was like, what are we doing? I, I'm like, you know, so we played 5 Yeah. Yeah. I had no idea what I was doing. I kept falling in the kitchen. I served and volleyed a couple of times. Right. Um, like it was horrendous. But we end up winning. No. Yes. Was and she good or were you just a natural? <laughs> I think I think she was good. And it was a combination of just I was, I, I think I had the element of surprise. I think I was just this, uh-huh. you know, wild loose cannon that was just surprisingly driving well, every ball not okay. playing the soft game that i play now right right and i came i, I, I was been, like i'm just gonna play tennis i have uh i have definitely lost to wild bangers just because they're good athletes and they can keep the ball in you know and so and i've even seen and this is hard to describe to people that you can pick up the game in almost a, one game yes you know, and that's pretty unique for a sport, I think. Oh, the learning curve is so, so, I mean, right. there's very little barrier to entry to pickleball, right? The, right, right. The perfected, that's a whole different story, but to Agreed. come in. Agreed. Right. And, you know, and I, I think I was, I was convinced I could play tennis. I could hit through anybody. I, I was there. I could hit the ball harder than anybody. I'm like, well, you know, forget the fact that it's a plastic ball, you know, and you're, there's no strings on the paddle, but I was just driving and just running around the court like I had this chicken. So I think they were more focused on what is this woman doing? Is she, you know, is she, is she all there? You know, <laughs> and uh, but I remember coming off the court going, that is so much fun. Like <laughs> I'm like, so after the first game, I'm like, so, okay. I'm like, what time do we play tomorrow? She's like, what are you talking about? I'm like, you play today. I'm like, no, we played a match. Now we'll play tomorrow. <laughs> you know, like thinking tennis. Uh-huh. And she's like, the whole event happens in a day. I'm like, this is fantastic. A, du- like, a double, a double elimination. Like I think it was a double elimination. Pen- tournament, yeah, but like in tennis, you play one match, you go home, you play the next day in the tournament, you know, and it's every day, one match right. day. So that's that's my that was my mentality. Right. And she's like, we play it all in a day. And I'm like, this is fantastic. It's a right. one day commitment. You know, you get to do it all in a day. And right. it's, it's fun. And I remember thinking this is the most fun I've ever had. I right. never, ever thought 
I mean, I enjoyed playing tennis and I did have fun playing tennis. But when I was competing, I never thought, oh, my God, this is so much fun. I can't wait to do it again. It's like, oh, we're lucky we got through that. Now let's regroup and, 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 and focus right. for tomorrow or the next day. Um, but in pickle, I was like, this is this is a lot of fun. And it's it's maybe it was a different time in my life that I was doing it. I was a little bit older and, and looking at it through a different lens. But wow. um, but I'm definitely having fun out there. And it's 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 still a lot of fun for me. Right. I mean, almost every point can be fun which, you know, you, you, in tennis, it was like, you know, 10% of your play was fun in the sense that right. it, it was interesting. Pickleball, almost every point could be fun. I think also, don't you agree that the shortness of the game, mean, and, and especially in open play, how you get to play with other people every 15, 20 minutes, really, I think, makes the sport what it is. Oh, and it's it's extremely social. I mean, I remember yeah. when I was, you know, when we opened Widgie Creek and was running Widgie Creek, we'd have these round robins, and people loved the fact that they just had to sign up for their level, didn't have to find three other people, and for two hours they would play with, you know, ten, twelve rounds with with a different partner every time, right? And and have a blast doing it, and it, that social aspect. I think it's because you're closer on the court. It's, um, you know, I'm not sure, but maybe because it started with, you know, a more mature population the 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 social element was there first I, I'm, I'm not entirely sure because it's the first it's the first game I think I've played where the social element is is prevalent I compare it to like pick up basketball um okay. you know where groups of guys get together girls and they just have pick up games and it's very social meaning you're you're mixing up a lot right. tennis and golf because uh, I, I was a big tennis player, big golf players. I played with the same 10 guys, tennis, for 30-some years. I played with the same probably 10 golf guys, you know, you know, for you play for five hours with the same three, you know, three guys. And it's not so, neither of them were social. <laughs> right. I mean, it's like, think about it. When was the last time you went down to the tennis club? Like you had a free Saturday or Sunday afternoon. When was the last time you went down to the tennis club and said, hey, can I get next? Right. <laughs> it doesn't happen. <laughs> you can sort of do that in golf at a country club. You can sort of go and get into a foursome, but it's right. not like the norm. You usually have a, a foursome scheduled. Right. Right. But with pickleball, I mean, you, you don't even have to have something set up. You can just go down to the course and somebody right. will invite you to play. Exactly. Um, I mean, it, that that part of it is so unique. And and I don't know. I think it's 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 done. It's done wonders for. I think for, you know, for everybody, getting people active, getting single people, you know, you name yeah. it. Oh, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's the it's first great game. for I single think. people. Oh, my God. It's right. You couldn't invent something better for a single person that doesn't, you know, a little not, you know, in, into socializing much. Okay. Uh, let's change subjects. That's all the great things about pickleball. I ask everybody this. Is there a pet peeve of pickleball that really bothers you? And I'll give you my example. My example is... It's sort of weird, but it just bug, bugs the heck out of me. When my opponent, you know, wins a point and they're going to serve, I hate the person that walks up to the net and waits for you to send, give them the ball instead of them walking back to where they serve, which is what I do, and you just hit the ball to where they are. Because then they have to take the ball and then walk back. I'm, I'm into p pace of play. Um, that's my pet peeve. <laughs> Do you have one with pickleball? Um, I think lately it's being trolled online by my illegal earnings. <laughs> oh. <laughs> like I'm doing them intentionally. Um, I No, I, I don't really have too many. I, I don't think I have a pet peeve on the pickleball court. I mean, it's annoying sometimes when you, you're playing fun rec games and you get every call is questioned. You know, uh, are you sure that was in, you know, or this or that? And it's like, you know, it's rec. Who cares? Do you want right. the point that bad? I'll give it to you. No biggie. <laughs> you know, it's, it's like, um, I, think I, I have to have a ball way out. Out. I have to have, a, yeah. I only call out if that ball is so obviously out, you know, if it's close, I'm just going to play, you know, or let my you know partner call it. Right. I mean, sometimes you get those people, you know, like in tennis where they have to win the warm up. Right. You know, and you're like, what's just happening here? This is there's not know. too many of those in pickleball. There's a few, but there's no, there's a few. And and there's, there's some sometimes the 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 people that really want to win wreck 
and keep stats on their rec games. I'm like, wow, why? It's, we're out here having fun, you know? Right, it's, right. And, and I think anybody who plays rec and plays tournaments um, hopefully will agree with me and, and, and say that they're a very different rec player than they are a tournament player. Right. You know, it's, it's a different mentality when you go into a tournament versus when you go play rec. Sure, sure. Rec is, should be just social and, you know, have fun. Um, let's talk about your MVP of the major league. We have a special award tonight. Uh, we had an online voting for the MVP of the league. This individual embodies the spirit of major league pickleball and our tagline, which is love the league, live the sport. I think you saw it on the court. There is no one that lives the sport like Lee Whitwell. Lee, please come on out. We want to give you a special award. We are so MVP, 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 MVP. Lee embodies the sport. She was drafted at the bottom, played at the top, and carried the spirit of comp competitiveness, collaboration, and joy that Major League Pickleball is about. Thank you so much for all you do for the sport and congratulations today. For somebody that was picked 15th in the uh, draft, getting MVP, that's a, that's a big honor. You must've really been honored. I was, it was a, it was a very welcomed um, surprise and, and definitely an honor to be recognized by, you know, the fans, the players, people watching online. Yep. Um, I didn't expect it. Um, I, um, you know, it's one of those things that's like, I, you know, for a while I was like, wow, I cannot believe I got this, this award. And um, yeah, I mean, Major League was a, was a phenomenal event. I had a fantastic time and, um, you know, hopefully can't wait to do it again. Where, where, what are you shooting for? What pick are you, are you trying to be under? <laughs> I, I mean, hopefully I'll be above 15. Like, that, 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 that's a win for me. I, I'll even take 14 <laughs> at this point. You know, I'm like, yeah, somebody thinks I'm slightly more worthy of <laughs> a higher pick. Um, <laughs> well, the MVP should get picked pretty high. Pretty high. Well, you know, you never know. Um, you never know. Never so, know. And, and I think, you know, based on based on last season's picks and, 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 and you know, going into, into this year and, and excited for what MLP is going to bring, there's going to be a lot more tactical decisions being made and strategic decisions being made into, into who's picking who and why. Um, I know some teams, you know, sometimes um, on paper looked really good and, you know, you looked at their doubles lineups and you're like, well, they picked two right-sided players. So that's not a good, you know, that, so, so I think that's going to come into play a lot more, you know, who's more of an alpha player. You should get a beta player for them. You don't want two alphas on the court, things like that. So I think the, the strategy of, of why people are picking who is going to come. Well, I think they're definitely going to be picking you for your singles play, you know, <laughs> against uh <laughs> no no everyone now is now i can drive the ball and, I, like, and my element of surprise is gone right like i am now not sure how to approach singles <laughs> had, had you played much singles prior no why would i do that i right, feel I like I, that's I, I barely just... i barely do i play maybe once or twice a year i do a singles game no you couldn't pay me enough to play singles on a tennis court which is like right four times the size I used yeah. to play singles on tennis, but that no. was when I was younger, you know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think college, like in my 20s was the last time I played singles. After college, I played a little bit after some singles, and that was the last time. It's right. like, no, why would I do that? That's just painful. Um, but I'll tell you what, every time I have played singles pickleball, I've loved it. I mean, it was just a blast to play a game. Uh, I wouldn't play it. I didn't have enough energy to play more than one game if I could make it through the game, but it was sort of fun. You know, it is sort of fun. No, I, I 100% agree. It's like, I will get out there and play singles for cardio and for training. Uh, um, but, great training. you know, and in major league, it was four points at a time. I can do four points. Right. Um, but that was two an out of interesting three to 11. format of how the tiebreaker worked. That was really pretty interesting. Whoever, whoever figured it all out, the whole you know, major league, they did a great job. Are they changing yeah, anything? Yeah. Are they, is no, there any that, that was Steve Kuhn. So the tiebreaker, you know, we call it the dream breaker because we played okay. it at Dreamland, and it's, it's, um, it's his brainchild. And, and he came up with major league and the formats and, 
it was interesting because when you 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 won that you you were asked one or two right and you picked right and not only did you get you get to pick serve side or receive you also got to pick um what did you, you want so let's say if you if let's say we won the toss right and we picked side for example yep. Right. Yep. Not only do we get to pick side, now we also get to pick from your team. Did we want to see your mixed lineup or, or did we want to see your singles lineup? Right. Only if and you won. Only if you won the toss, right? Correct. But then if we picked your if we picked to see your mixed lineup, then we'd have to show you our singles lineup first. <laughs> so, so, you know, it was like chess. It was one of those things. Yes, very much chess. And it was um yeah. And I bet I bet you a lot of teams really didn't think it through until the moment you know now season two i guess everybody will really have a plan you know uh yes the are you making activate. decisions haphazardly like as a team i i know for us i think most of the time we went with singles lineup okay we wanted to see singles lineup first um because on paper we had Annalie as a singles player. True, true. Hey, AJ's Kyle, played some Kyle's singles. Damn good too, yeah. Yeah, but he hasn't played singles in a while, and and but, me, they. Like, but he's young. It. He's he's young, yes. which is the key criteria for singles. And, and our goal, our goal, and and that was to put me as the as a sacrificial lamb, so to speak. Oh. I'm like, let me go up ahead. I'll go up against the number one guy, and I'll try. Did they ask to get you, or did you volunteer? I, I mean, it was, it was, it was, it was a volunteer, but it Understood. was a tactical, it was a tactical decision. It's like, listen, if I can get one point, right. we're right. down three, one, not four, zero. Right. You know, if I get two, now it's a 50, 50. Now you got one in the first set. So e each player plays three points, four, four points. I mean, uh, to gain to 11. Correct. And so it could go all the way around depending upon and it did and then at yeah. 10 whichever team got to 10 so it was rally scoring oh rally right it was rally scoring till first team got to 10 and then the first the team who got to 10 had to win on their serve oh. and then it became regular scoring yeah it's crazy i mean it was fun it was you know people loved the dream breaker watching it, oh, it sure. added it's a, like a, uh yeah it's like any there. play any you know uh although the nfl blew it this last weekend totally in uh their playoff you know tiebreaker format just terrible i'm not i i'm gonna have to play the fifth on that because i'm a terrible, yeah. terrible they allow one they, they do a flip of the coin and whoever gets the flip the wins the flip gets the ball if that if that team on the first drive can score a touchdown they win the game Oh, done. So sudden death. Yeah, sudden death. But okay. it's just not fair. It's just not fair. Right. So. And that's a new rule they came up with. Uh, they, yeah, well, a, a bunch of years ago, like at least in college, both teams get a chance. And if they right. both score a touchdown, then they go again. Right. With, with the NFL. It, 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 it's one and done. One and done. Yeah. If, if you score. Right. Okay, uh, let's move on. So you also won, or you are known to have done and executed the most Ernie's by any player. <laughs> Was that in just the major league, or is that like for the whole? Tour? I have no, I have no idea. But you know, the minute you release this podcast, everyone's going to go like, "Yeah, but probably seventy percent of them were illegal." <laughs> You know, I saw that comment. I saw that comment. I know <laughs> somebody said that maybe it's because I'm close to being a senior that I can't jump out of the kitchen. No, I, mean, I think it's just that you do a lot of them. So I do a lot of them, and, and 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 half the time I have a fairly good idea of where I'm at on the court, but sometimes I just want to. I see the opportunity and I go, and I'm not checking my feet. Right, it's the yeah. element of surprise, and um, but no, I do. And and here's the thing: I'm going for the Ernie a lot of the time, not because I necessarily want the ball. But it's more. I want you to be looking at me before you're hitting the ball, and I'm bringing my partner into the into the point. Do you, uh, you know? tell, do you advise your partner to follow? Like when I go, <laughs> I, I go for Ernie's a lot too. But my partner doesn't come over, so if, if I go too early, my mistake is I go too early, and then I leave a big gap, right? So can you talk about partnering? 
let's let's start with partnering on an Ernie. Do you have to get your partner to move over when you when when they when they see you go? To no, cover? you just have to you just have to make sure they're young <laughs> and they can move. <laughs> they're supposed to follow you right and especially right. and, and let's face it like when when i'm going for the ernie i'm not going for a ball that's hit on their inside foot i'm going to a ball that's been hit on their outside foot okay. right so it's closer to that sideline yeah. so by default that ball being closer to the sideline your partner should have moved over a little bit yeah. right because sure. we're, we're triangulating and we're, and we're picking on on that person right to try to pinch the middle and and, and and hopefully pop that ball up so we can attack but if then if i go for the ernie then, um, yeah, sometimes the, my partner has to. Do you um, wait? Here's a question. Uh, do you wait for your opponent to look away from you before you go for the Ernie? What, what's your, what's your uh, key to pull the trigger to, to, to jump or to step through? It depends who you're playing. Okay. Um, a lot of the times that you want that ball slightly behind their outside foot. Okay. Um, so they're looking back, right. and then you can sneak in. Oh, man, that is huge. Read the play beautifully. Um, or you want them being stressed out so that they're scrambling to get the ball and not really focused on what you're doing. Um, and sometimes it's just fun to have them look at you and be like, oh, I know you're not going. And I'm like, oh, so sorry, I did. Right. And here I am. <laughs> okay, next question. Um, uh, what makes your decision to step through the kitchen versus jump? Do you, do you not there think about no it? There is no thought process there whatsoever. Um, I, honestly, never, I never I, step through. I, I should maybe try to step through a few times, but I'm always like jumping. Which it's, Jumping is definitely easier. And if I have enough time, I will jump. Sometimes I just want to get there. And the biggest issue there is I've got to drag my foot and reestablish that, that, that lead right. foot on the ground, which no, you, don't have to, proven, you don't necessarily have to drag, but you got to get your foot down. Yeah, I've got to, yeah. I've got to make sure I put my foot down on the ground. And, um, you know, you as was you, established, what, it was not, not, not always a case. Yeah, yeah don't, don't, don't worry about that. I'm just, it's more a technique and I'm, uh, it's very interesting. Do you, do you think to drag or when you step in, do you step out to get in? So, know? so here's, here's, a, so in thinking about it, I tend to jump the kitchen oh, most of the if time. I'm going to backhand Ernie. Oh, okay. Okay. I'm going to jump and backhand Ernie. I will step through further to get out so I can forehand Ernie. Oh, okay. And I think those are the two distinctions. I because I was I was drilling this morning and I did I did jump. And every time I jumped, I was hitting a backhand. When I stepped through, I'm hitting a forehand. And you're you're a lefty, right? Uh correct. Yeah, and this so, is going on the right side. You know, so the, yeah, the, the video is on the right side, so you're doing a forehand and you have to get further over. Got it. Right. But if I were to hit a backhand, I would jump. And when you because step I, through. And when you step through, are you um, always dragging? Is that your way of getting that foot in, uh, out of the kitchen? Or have you sometimes stepped out? It's both. Um, it's uh, very okay. much uh, in the moment when I go, it's, it's, I have to be thinking about my, um, I tend to step through with my right, I think. Yeah, I step with, I leave in my right foot. Yep. Um, right, and then I got, right was in. You had to get that right. Yes. Foot. So my left foot gets out, and then I've got to really think about that right foot. And sometimes um, the ball is too juicy, and I forget about what my feet are doing. Um, <laughs> but but you know, so you get caught up in the moment sometimes, and you forget. Um, yeah, I but yeah, that, I tried to. In that shot, I sort of the, I kept looking at it, and I'm wondering whether reaching for it caused your foot to go up. You know, because you really had to stretch a little bit to hit it. Right. And sometimes if they hit a great, you know, they hit a good dink back and I'm stretching for that Ernie. I, there's my body. There's no way I can reset that right foot. Uh -huh. um, and if I stepped on the line as I've led through, then it's a fault. Um, now, where, where do you target your shot on the Ernie? Right at that player or right next to that player? 
just down like what now you're making me give away all my secrets that's what i'm trying to get yes because I, I so if i yeah if i jump and i hit a back end i'm pretty much going to go middle or angle cross court okay. and i'll try to go angle through kitchen and push the ball out because i'm assuming that other their opponent has squeezed over okay um, so i can get that sharp angle if oh, real, I, real sharp like down down correct down. correct got it uh, i've never done one of those but i've seen those and if I'm jumping with my forehand, um, typically my first and foremost goal is to hit you. Mm. Which is um, not a bad strategy. Yeah. Right. And it's more of a, I just want to get that ball right at you. Well, and I assume, right? Yes, yes, yeah. yes, yes. Yeah. Because if I go over your head, you duck, it's going out. Um, cool. As a low percentage shot. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. Or they, they um, might be able to hit it. They might be able to get the paddle. So, yeah. So I tend to go at the person, you know, knees down uh, or to the right of slightly to the right of them. Mm -hmm. um, but the key is to get the ball down to the ground. And um, typically, typically, if I can get the ball between your shins and your shoes, that ball is not coming back. What do you do? I have trouble when the ball is real low to the net. I, I, I hit either have to hit the net. It's, it can get real tricky. Do you, do you get that kind of situation? Yeah, those are those are um, not fun. Right. So those ones you just have to earn a dink back and get back in. Got it. Right. It's so then the pressure now is on you to hit a shot that's going to allow you because you've decided to go, you know, pretty much close to the other side of the court on that shot. Right. So now you now you got to hit a good shot that, that's going to allow you to come back. So your partner's not going, "Hey, I'm playing singles. I didn't sign up exactly. for singles. Come back." My partner, I have to play a lot of singles because <laughs> I, I, I I totally. Go way too early. I, I've got to. I've got to like take an extra bead, and then go. I just go too early. That's my my problem. Do you do you like to straddle the corner uh, in prep for the Ernie, or you you just wait and then go? Um, it depends. In mix, I tend to straddle more. Okay. Um, because I want to bring my partner into that point and make him more imposing on the court. Um, oh, which is going to, you know, and, and thus shrinking the, the amount of real estate I have so that there's pressure on the opponents to find me and then I can go. Um, and then, um, yeah, you know, I, I was taught to try to maybe straddle. not so much sometimes. Um, it depends. It, mm -hmm. it, I guess it depends on who my partner is and, and what they're comfortable covering. Right. That's the big issue. You, you really put your partner in, make, make them vulnerable if uh, you're, you're going too early or, you know, because you're way off the court, even with a strike. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's definitely times that I've gone for something and my partner's been like, oh, you left. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I'll come have back. You, have you ever had an opponent, this happened to me, where they actually saw me going for the earning and they came at me put their paddle up and we, 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 they were able to uh, return with a really quick shot. Uh, have you had anybody pull that on you? I did. And once the only defense I know to an earth, you know, just attack, right. attack back. But this was, it, it was in rec play and I went for Ernie and he blocked it, yeah. but not only did he block it, he blocked it right at me. Right. So then I got hit. Right. And I was like, Outside what just court. happened? I'm like, this is not this right. is not how I envisioned this play going. <laughs> First time it happened to me, I'm there. Wait yeah. a minute. That's that can't happen. And and most of the time it's like it's our fault because we did not get the angle correct. Right. So we went right at the person. So then it becomes very blockable, right? Right. Well, um, they have to be smart enough to come at you once they realize what they've done or right. 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 Yeah, it's not okay. a tactic I've done when they've tried to earn me. I'm more like, okay, I got burned. Yeah. Should have seen that coming. Uh -huh. you know? But I'm not going to charge into an Ernie. Someone earning me, I'm not charging in. Do you do any Ernie's uh, running up to the net? Um, like on the third shot, fourth shot? Yes. Have you seen those? They're, they're, I haven't done one of those yet. They're really yeah. cool. Yeah. And most of the time I'll do that in mixed. Okay. Um. Because a lot of the times I'll try, you know, if they try to find me on a third and they're, they're, they're pulling the ball um, 
to that right. outside part of the court where I can jump out and take it as a forehand, or if I stayed in the court, I would take it as a backhand, uh -huh. and I could just get that much closer to the net. Um, so yeah, those are those are always fun fun to do, and it's just getting it in your brain, right? To to jump outside of the court to do it. I suspect I know. The, I suspect I know the answer to this one, but have you done a Bert yet? No. <laughs> I've tried them. It is so hard. Oh, boy, that is super athletic right there. <laughs> I'm like I a foot would... short. I, you know, I, I don't even get close to g g carrying the line. No, I've, I've, I don't even think I've attempted one. I've, I've um, attempted a few but not and, even close. And, and I might try one in rec, but I'm definitely not trying one in a tournament and getting trolled yeah. for, for taking eight <laughs> steps in the kitchen. <laughs> but like, I can't believe she didn't get called on that. Look how she took a stroll through the kitchen. <laughs> right, right. I, I think you need like a running start, like, you know, a big running start and maybe, but then I'm afraid I'm going to probably break a leg or an ankle, you know. And, and it's, I think it's also understanding who you're playing with and if i'm going to do a bert on someone my partner's got to give me that room in front of oh. them to go right <laughs> if they're if they're super tight on the line it's not happening <laughs> right. i do it with my wife and she thinks i'm nuts <laughs> yeah no it's uh i i just and yeah no it's i i i, I will never i don't think i'll try I, one i i did one this last weekend right and the, the opponents were so surprised, they didn't even question whether I made it, at, you know, over the line. They just lost the point. They, they thought that was amazing. I said, sorry, guys, but I was way in the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't even close. Yeah, I mean, they look fun. I, you know, I see all the guys do them all the time. Oh, um, really? I don't see too many. Yeah, I guess. They also have like six foot long legs. Right. And under... 20 or under 30. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and they just spring through like a gazelle, like nothing. Right. And they're like, oh. Right. Like nothing, right? Yeah. Uh, okay. Um, so you have YouTube channel. I found your YouTube channel. Three, 934 su subscribers. Hi, I'm Amy Whitwell, pro pickleball player and coach. And welcome to my YouTube page. Oh, wow. Yeah. I know. I haven't posted on there in a while. I gotta get, I gotta, I've got some more tips that I need to post on there. You have a whopping 14 videos. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Did you delete a whole bunch or you just have 14? No, I started doing it and then um, just got busy with work and, and stuff and just need to now get, get back to doing some more because I enjoy doing them. I, I enjoy doing quick tips that, that'll help people because, you know, I figured if it helps me, maybe it'll help somebody else. I love your uh, tracking the ball. Um I, all my missed shots are because I'm not hitting the center of the paddle. Mm -hmm. And I tell myself, I've got to watch the ball hit the paddle. And I just keep forgetting and I keep missing shots. But uh, talk briefly about your look. Was it look, see? Correct. Yeah. So, you know, it's like, I mean, from, from tennis, I, I mean, how many times have you told oh. to watch the ball? You know, right. watch the ball, watch the ball. Well, you know, I'm watching the ball. but you know, take that a step further. To me, watching is very passive, right? That's what you do on the couch when your TV's on. Right. You know, when you've misplaced your cues, you look for them. That's an active verb. So I try to turn the passive verb into an active, which you look and you see. You know, I want to look I for see. the ball hitting your paddle and I want to see the ball hitting mine. You know, and that's active. And the more now when my eyes are engaged, now we're in a slightly better position to do something. Mm -hmm. um and in all the time that we spend drilling and all the time we spend on our game no matter what even in tennis um the muscle that we train the least are our eyeballs yeah we don't train them correctly in and we need to um because most of the shots we miss is because we looked up too soon we looked away we didn't see our contact point and and they're very i mean let's face it pickleball we're not making high level mistakes Sorry, somebody just called in. We're not making high level mistakes in pickleball. They're very, very basic. And nine times out of 10, it's because we took our eye off the ball or right. tried to do too much. Exactly. Yeah. So um, if we train our eyes, then we're getting a leg your, up on 
how how does that compare or is it as important as paddle position you know when you're not hitting the ball i mean are, are you big into your paddle up set you know in front of you high low medium uh you know sort of paddle ready what's your paddle ready philosophy so i try to track the ball with my paddle oh. I, I i stay slightly more backhand okay. than forehand i don't stay quite at 12 o'clock i'm probably left-handed so more at one o'clock or right if i was right-handed it'd be more at 11 o'clock right um but i tend to try to follow that ball wherever it is with the paddle. especially with the paddle because the last thing i want to do is have my paddle here the ball be over there now right. that's a lot of distance to come back from yeah yep. and my, my you know now my right shoulder is is very jammed oh. and yep. exposed so I don't want to do that. So I try to track the ball as much as I possible. But yes, because of tennis and the way I hold the paddle, I, I lean slightly more backhand, but I still want my paddle pointing somewhere where the ball is and, and lined up with the ball somehow. Uh, another topic, um, mic'd players. Uh, were you mic'd in any of the uh, matches? For MLP, I was mic'd yeah. the whole time. That's cool. Um, how, how yeah. Did you like it? What, what did you think? I loved it. It was fun. I mean, I think um, for online viewing, it was good uh -huh. because people got to hear what players say. Um, I think at one point I did say, uh, oh, my godly, that was so stupid. Your mother would have made that shot or something <laughs> referencing my mother. And, you know, after the match, I looked at my phone and she's like, please don't refer reference me in your crappy shot selections, right? And I'm like, oh, <laughs> you were watching and you heard um but no i think I, I, it gives you an insight into players and, and yeah and it makes them more and i think it makes players more human uh -huh. um at one point you know annalee and i had some great bantering back and forth so did aj and i in our matches and it, it's i think it's just fun i enjoyed being mic'd up it's you know occasionally you say something you shouldn't um yeah, right. and you just apologize and move on and it just I think it just shows that, that you're human and, you know, we're not out there just being robots hitting a ball. I'm uh, running my first tournament and I'm thinking of actually buying some mics. So like the open division playoffs, mic the players, because a lot of people will be watching, you know, uh, and uh, I thought it would be fun just to try it, you know, in a, just a normal tournament play. It will be um, interesting. Yeah, I don't know whether the players will like it, but I'm going to try it just to see what it's, you know, if it if it's a different uh, atmosphere or whatnot. The hardest thing is securing the mic. Oh. Um, I mean, we use the ace bandages and for us, they could attach it to sports press for guys. Oh, it was a bit yeah. harder. Yeah. Um, so but you, um, you just couldn't clip it onto your. No, you clip the mic on, but the battery pack. Right. So we all had battery packs on. Oh, you had to tape the battery pack? Yes. Or? Yeah. Wow. So you're trying to tape the battery pack and sometimes, you know, the base bandage would roll up and it's uncomfortable. But uh, um, I mean, I think that was the only issue with the mics. I, you know. Got it. I got um, to think, I gotta think that through. I guess yeah. you got to look for a really light uh, battery pack or whatever it is. It's the transmitter, I guess, right? A right, because really you don't because you've got that long cable too, and you, then it's like you don't want that cable dangling. It's going to get in people's, you know. So you, it's like, how do you attach it? Yeah, and the most comfortable way that's not going to impede impede play. Right, right. Hmm. Okay, good, good advice. Um, let's talk a little bit if you have a little bit more time about your recent uh, tournament play. Okay. So you got silver at the APP Masters just this past week, right? Correct. And let's see, you played with uh, JW, you played with JW a bunch. He's like more than half your age, right? <laughs> Way so, more than half my age. Right, like, right, I so. could probably be his grandmother. No, you're not. No, uh, not. Okay, may, but I could be his mother. You could be his sure. mother. Right, right. right. Um, yeah, I've, I've been playing quite a bit with JW and his sister. Yes, um, I've noticed. And Georgia, you know, and I think the week before we both, George and I came in fourth in doubles and JW and I came in fourth in mix. Uh -huh. And and then at Boca, we got silver and played well. And, you know, it's, you, it's How did fun. you hook up with JW? How did you hook up with JW? Um, you know, I'm friends with his mom and then we all just became friends. And it's okay. it's fun to 
I feel like somewhat, I'm, I'm somewhat of a safe player for them to play with because I'm not going to get mad at them. I'm going to encourage them. I, I want to be supportive. I want to be a mentor. Oh, right. And um, right. it's, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to encourage them to play their game and develop their game. And it, it's so fun having a front seat watching these kids grow and get better week in, week out and get more confident on the court. Um, so, you know, in that regard, I feel like, I, I, you know, it's – I'm, I'm a good partner for them because it's it's not I mean yes it's all about winning um because we do want to win but right. it's 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 we're gonna win with them playing their games right it's not um right. we never want to stifle their growth or anything or we'll be that partner because sometimes in partnerships when when you want to win at all costs you know it, tensions can get high and and tempers can flare and that, that gold medal game. that gold medal match was very close with that goal very yeah it was it was a really cold day and it was we played really well um and it could have gone either way and unfortunately it didn't go our way but we learned from it and you know we debriefed afterwards we got quite a few tournaments this year and i'm looking forward to to playing more with him and and seeing him grow and you know take over the court and be imposing because deckel's very imposing on the court and 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 jw has the ability to be just as imposing and it's, it's it's almost there and it's fun to see. Uh huh. Yeah, he's he's a rising star, big big rising star, I think. For the oh my God, yes, sport. and he's so talented. Uh huh. Okay, so then the APP Mesa Open. Let's see, play with JW again and mm-hmm. Jordan. Uh, same two partners, right? Yeah, uh, we got fourth there both times. Yeah, you lost to the silver medalist with Jordan. Uh, against uh andrea and jesse right yep correct yeah it was a close match we were right yeah. there 15 12 yeah and it, just came, it came down to a few on four stairs always um, so, yeah. yeah so we were i mean we were right there it was fun it was it was a great battle it's it's one of those matches where yes you want to win but you can't be too upset when you walk off the court with how you played because all four people played well you right. know we just made a couple of mistakes that we shouldn't have yeah Okay, the APP World Big Ball. I uh, played with Jordan again, but you played with Thomas Wilson in mixed, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, have you played with him much, or was that like just a one shot? We talked about in- playing. Yeah, we talked about playing, and um, that one worked out that we were able to play together. But um, I'm looking forward to to hopefully partnering up some with him this year. Yeah, you got bronze a- with uh, Jordan, which is cool. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, it was good. And, a, and again, another uh, close match um, for the bronze, right? Yeah, yes. very close. Very close. Uh, against Sarah and Maggie. Correct. The PPA championship. Uh, let's see. You played with Patrick Smith. Isn't Yeah, it, we don't have you, to go that far back. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But isn't it... it don't you think pickleball tournament play is pretty interesting how uh, much pros mix up with different partners? I mean, some do stay together for like a whole season, but I do notice a lot of, uh, you know, pairings, changing of pairings. Uh, yeah. I think it's, I think it's people just trying to figure out who their best partner is. Um, you know, sometimes like on paper, it looks like we would play really well together. And then we get out of the court and we're like, oh, we got this wrong, didn't we? Or yes, we got it right. We should carry on playing together. Um, so I think there's a lot of that going on that people, especially when you're watching people play, you're like, oh, I think I'd play well with them. And then you, you sign up for a tournament and you get on the court. You're like, what was I thinking? We play terrible together. Um, how, far, how far out are you pairing up? Um, you know, three um, months, six months, nine months? Pretty much, you know, six months to a year. Okay. Everyone, everyone's pretty much partnered up for the year. Okay. Um, and then looking into 2023 already. Wow. Wow. I know. And that's, that's, uh, that's like way too much pressure for me. I'm like, right, I don't right. know what I'm having for dinner, let alone what I'm doing next week. Forget 2023. Hey, Lee, thank you so much for your time. I don't want to take Oh, you're very welcome. It's I really appreciate it. Great. Great. <laughs> We're a little bit off. Uh, much on the early, but uh, and I apologize if I said anything wrong in that video. I don't know if you watched my video, but I tried to be a no, not at all. You did not. I, I'm and, um, and here's the thing it's like I, I look at it and 
you know, it's, it's amusing to me. It's like, you, you know, if you're being talked about, you know, your life. <laughs> right, right, right. right. I mean, um, I honestly think it was educational to a lot of people. I didn't, I honestly did not realize you could drag your foot. And then the second you would touch the outside, you'd be considered, you know, so I think it's a great learning. Somebody even asked in one of my comments, what's an Ernie? And so it's just, there's so much, I'm into educating and teaching and stuff. And so anything like this can help people learn. Oh, for sure. For sure. And it's, it's one of those things. It's like, you know, so long as everyone knows that when, when people are out there doing these things, no one's trying to, you know, break the rules intentionally to get a point. Right. It's, Right. It's all one of those things. And it's, you know, I think, unfortunately, Dom said, oh, and that's a textbook Ernie. <laughs> like he followed it up. His commentary did not help. But from <laughs> his standpoint, where he, where he was commentating from, you know, he was on the left, far left. So oh. therefore, he was not going to see that violation from his, from his vantage point. And it looked like right. a textbook Ernie. So um, even slow-mo zoomed in, it's hard to really tell. I mean, so th- there's no way a ref could make a, a positive or negative call. Right. I you think know? somebody said something made a reference to the shadow of my foot. And I'm like, that's a lot. Of, you know, I'm like, did you get a ruler? Do you, it's like, wow. Well, <laughs> but, yeah, that's if you stop the video. Right. You, know, you, you stop it and you zoom in, you can see a shadow. So. <laughs> I think my biggest fear now is having people like show up to my matches sitting right by in that, you know, in that kitchen line on the, on the, on the right side of the court. I'm like, I'm never going to earn you again. <laughs> do, you, <laughs> do you think uh, instant replay is going to come to the sport? I'm sorry. What was that? Do you think instant replay is going to come into the sport eventually? Um, to review a, a call? Yeah, I, I'm not, I think it will. I'm not sure how. Because, you like know, am I, so am I allowed a challenge if I thought you Ernie, if that was a violation, I can say challenge. How, how's and it working to tennis? It's, there's, there's reviews. And you have, you have unlimited challenges till you get it wrong and then you lose your challenge. So, right. So, so yeah, maybe something like, like that. that or the ref could review um, if he thought. Wasn't um, sure, right? Yeah, yeah but, it's, but it's I, be I think. That's the thing. It's got to be questioned. Correct. And, and I, I think it's getting to the point now where, you know, you don't want millimeters or inches deciding the outcome of a game. Right. Um, so, you know, I mean, Hawkeyes worked in tennis. Um, could we do something similar like that with the lines? I don't know. But um, I don't think it's fair on the refs. And, you know, I've been on, on, on the other side of the net when this has happened, where I've challenged the call and the refs that I couldn't see it. Right. Right. Because of the ref standing here, that far back baseline now becomes problematic baseline sideline. They can't, they can't see it. Um, and, you know, can, are players going to start calling balls out that are close because the ref can't see them and they know they can get away with it. Yeah. That, that would be that, yeah. you know, that's the ugly side of sport. And when money gets involved, you never know, right. People want to win and they want to win money. And um, so we've got to avoid right. that. I think line refs would help. You know? I think so. Um, I know a lot of players aren't in favor of, of having line judges, but I am. Yeah, what's um, the what's the problem? Right. You know? Um and and, and, I, and I, I do think the refs have a thankless job. I mean, they're they're not doing it, they're not getting rich off you know, refing matches. They do it because they love the sport, they believe in the sport. Right. And I think some players take advantage of that and and maybe, you know push the envelope a little bit more with a ref than they should um, yeah, because I, I, no one's out there. Yeah, they're just out there doing the best, like, just like we are. I wonder whether the tour would be against, uh, you know, six refs per match because of the cost. It would definitely, uh, definitely add to the cost. You know? But if the sport's evolving and the money, you know, and more money's coming into the sport, right. then the costs are justified. Right? right. And it's not a, it becomes a, a swallowable expense versus right now it's like you want me to pay for how many match, how many reps and and the other thing too is it, it's going to be hard getting reps true you know that's a lot of reps now per match uh correct but i could see it in the finals of you know or you metal know. matches you yeah. know yeah 
Um, definitely. I, I, I think I think it's going to get to the point where it has to be because from where the ref is standing, there's so many blind spots and angle differences that you can't see things. The uh, instant replay too would be a major expense because I'm sure that is not a trivial setup to be able to have enough cameras to see all things and be able to bring back that shot real quick so the ref's not waiting and waiting for somebody to find the spot on the video you know right yeah i mean that's the other thing right the delay is like is it going to take two minutes that's that's a lot of cool down time so yeah you gotta have a you have to have a pretty sophisticated video system to be able to have that you know queued up so somebody can look at it real quick right so. okay lee thank you so much I my really pleasure your time good luck with your career and kick some butt out there okay and, uh, yeah hopefully we'll see you in florida yeah yeah it's all right you playing Delray? Playing Delray, playing men's and women and mixed. Awesome. Well, I look forward to seeing you there. Okay, great, great. Take care. Take care. Bye. Uh, let me bring up my list. I've been researching you for the last few hours. <laughs> uh oh. Yeah. Should I be afraid? No, I don't think so. Um, uh, where is my Zoom? I got to make stuff bigger so I can read it. <laughs> I want to thank my new sponsor, Selkirk. They make a full line of paddles and gear. They just sent me their new Vanguard 2.0 paddle to review. The review is in the link above. Announcing the Avalon Open Pickleball Tournament. Friday, May 20th through Sunday, May 22nd. Register online at pickleballtournaments.com. The full link is in the video description. Friday will be men's and women's singles. Saturday will be men's and women's doubles. And Sunday will be mixed doubles. There are skill, age, social, and open divisions with prize money. The tournament will be held at the A Street Recreational Center in Avalon, New Jersey. Make a vacation weekend out of it. Come enjoy the Avalon beaches, restaurants, and bars. Also announcing the 2022 Beach Summer League. Register online with Pickleball Den. Links are in the description. The league runs from Memorial Day to Labor Day with a playoff tournament at the end of the season. Join the fun and competitive Pickleball's Life Beach Summer League. We will be using the Pickleball Den app this year to register, see your matches, and record your match results. When registering, go under brackets and we will see the various divisions. Men's doubles, women's doubles, mixed doubles, and singles. Another way you can support my channel is to use the Amazon product links I have in the description of the video. There's no cost to you or added cost, or you can go to my Amazon storefront and select a product. And check out my Pickleball Venues Google Map. There's a link in the description. And check out my Pickleball Tournaments Google Calendar with all the Mid-Atlantic East Coast tournaments coming up. Hey, if you like this video and want to help support my pickleball channel, we have Pickleball is Life t-shirts available in both v-neck and crew cut, in both dry fit and cotton, with sleeves, sleeveless, and women's racerbacks. I just got in new A4 blocked shirts with stripes down the side. For the fall, I just got in North End women's and men's radar quarter zip performance long sleeve tops. And I have men's performance shorts available. I also have Pickleball's Life hats and sport towels. You can purchase them from me on the court, online at Etsy, or just Venmo me the money and I'll mail them right out. <laughs> <laughs>